Okay, welcome back uh, to Unscripted and Unchained. This is uh, should be the last episode of Mifrog, Fair Winds, and Bloody Shores. Um, so the final episode of our gameplay. And uh, where we left off was uh, the character Najal was uh, was just transferred from the uh, you know from one of the uh, the secondary ships or, or possibly actually it was a secondary ship of Torvik Greyhand's small fleet uh, raider fleet of uh, three dragon ships, and uh, they've consolidated. Onto just two ships now. One of the ships was lost during a uh, during a combat that they had with a uh, with a sea kraken, and um, and so now they're they're taking their their small ship uh, or or two ships, their flotilla, uh, to the shore uh, in order to make some repairs because. Uh, you know, more than just the one ship. One ship got sunk, but the other two ships uh, still managed to uh, to take some damage. And so they're going to bring them ashore to uh, do those repairs. So your fl flotilla sets sail, you know, um, at the first signs of, you know, of the sun setting. And, um, you know, you've, you've secured... You've secured uh, what uh, materials from the other ship before you let it uh, before you let it uh, flounder and you know sink, and uh, so now I, I believe, if I, I recall, combined up your you know the combat has cost uh, your combined strength about thirty crewmen, um, a few off of your ship. Um, and you know, obviously, a bulk off of the uh, the one ship that was sunk. They probably lost about twenty, um, about twenty of those thirty uh, total off of that ship. And so, so now you guys are setting sail towards the, you know, towards the shoreline, and uh, you can make a sailing roll. Three d six. Uh, yes. Now this is a a difficulty of uh, a difficulty setting of uh, an eight, so you just have to be an eight. One of them fell off. <laughs> so uh, nine. A nine. Okay. Um. All right, so that's that's fine. That's a a successful roll. Yeah, so you know, obviously you're you're back up uh, in in up in the rigging, and you're you know now you're you're kind of more so calling the shots on rigging up the ship, but you you chose to be up on the you know on the the top mast as you're calling down to the crew. So you, you have a very good view of everything going on, and um, you start moving the, you know, you start directing your, your crew and your ship starts heading on in. The secondary ship is, uh, is, is following along. Um, and as the st sun starts coming down, uh, you guys get within, you guys get within a, a pretty short uh, distance of of the shore, and that's when the captain, you know, calls to, you know, pull up your sails, and uh, you're gonna drop anchor and then take your, you know, the the smaller. Actually, you're probably close enough that you you might not need the smaller boats in. You guys just start trudging in towards the uh, towards the shoreline. So you're probably in water about waist deep. Uh, once you hit the water, you know, and, uh, you know, the crews start heading towards the shoreline and uh, you're going to probably make uh, make some kind of camp because it is now it's it's probably mid evening hour. So probably around seven ish or so.
I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no problem. All right. So, did you get all that? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, your let's see, what skill would you use? It's like I said, you're kind of like you're in charge of a small group of people. So, I mean, you can make a role as far as um, as far as making the camp is concerned. So that would be a let's see, let's see. I don't have your character sheet in front of me. So, what skills does your character have? Um, Uh, do you mean uh, trained or character role? A character role, yeah. Like what kind of, ooh, yeah, yeah, trained. Like if you have any trained skills for, you know, setting up a camp. I mean, you could do like foraging skill. Do you have foraging? Uh... Yes, yes, foraging yeah. and crafts. Okay. All right, so do a foraging role. And foraging is modified by intelligence. Okay. Let's see. 11 with a plus 1 to intelligence is 12. Okay. All right. So, yeah, you, you start, you know, you start making camp and, uh, you know, you direct your, your group of five people to start foraging, um, you know, getting some you know, getting some materials to set up, uh, you know, to set up a, a, um, a fire, you know, a fire pit and, you know, to get some other, um, items that you might need for making some ship repairs and such. So even though the, the ships are fairly, you know, um, seaworthy, it's just, uh, materials for, you know, rope and materials for, um, you know, uh, stitching up some of the sails and stuff like that. You could use like reeds and things like that in order to at least patch some of the holes, um, you know, in the sails and, um, you know, whatever other, you know, foraging materials that uh, your groups might need. So the captain, uh, Torvik, he calls the, you know, some of his lead people uh, which you are now one of them. Um, and he starts, uh, he starts telling you like what his plans are. So you're probably still several miles, uh, south, you know, along the shoreline, um, from the encampment or the, you know, the, the small fort that, uh, you guys were actually coming up here to raid and uh even though he was planning on on moving ashore much later on and closer to the uh to the raid site um he's he's now thinking that uh you guys will just walk the few miles up and and then um you know and then assault the the small fort um to go for your objective. I mean, are you going to, you know, everybody kind of like, just like sits around. They, they just listen to him and, and, you know, listen to his thing. Like he never really comes out and like asks for suggestions, but you don't think that he's kind of, you know, closed off to any either. Um, Although you having limited experience, I don't know if you want to, you know, um, you know, make any suggestions or not. It's up to you if you, you know, thinking of anything. I'm going to just follow the captain's lead. Yeah. I don't think it's my place. Okay. Point. All right. So you guys make camp and, and he, you know, I mean, he would have asked like each of the you know, each of the team captains, like where, um, 
you know, what, what's the situation as far as, you know, the encampment is concerned and everything. And, and you would have relayed to them that, um, you know, your, your particular squad is, you know, will be prepared, um, to move out, um, on his command at early in the morning and, uh, the ships are, are secured. And so, um, he's going to, he's going to leave, uh, a small enough crew for both ships that in case they do have to, um, in case they do have to launch off and, and, you know, get the ships, uh, you know, moving, you know, in case, you know, pirate hunters or any, you know, other potentially hostile ships come, you know, come close to them, they can move them back out again. So you think he's planning on taking, roughly 30 of you um to the to the north and that'll leave a complement of you know roughly 15 per ship in order to move the ships so he's taking about half the number um you originally had you know slightly above 90 crew members uh, between the three ships, so now you're you're just taking one third of that, uh, you know, north towards the encampment. So anyway, so it's uh it's can more you, than now. Can you repeat that? All right, so you're going to you repeat that. Yes, you're going to be traveling along with about thirty. You're going to have about thirty. Uh, okay. Thirty crew. You know, the captain yourself several other officers and about 30 men will be moving forward. Uh, he's leaving 15 crew members per ship uh, behind just in case the ships have to be relaunched and, uh, and put out to sea for their own protection or to, right. you know, um, or to move, move up north. Uh, once you are successful, they can then, launch them, move them up north and, uh, and pick you guys up. But, uh, he's only taking about one third of his original complement of, uh, of people. You started out with 90, you lost, uh, about 30, um, during the, the combats and you're down to 30 marching forward. Okay. okay. Yeah. It was just the end of that. You kind of yeah. got off. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, so it's the next morning now, and uh, is there anything that you're going to do? Uh, you know, once you, you know, once you wake up and everything, uh, anything that you're going to do in particular? I guess uh, I'll just uh, talk to Torvik. And just ask him, uh, so, sir, what is our uh, what is our exact plan of attack? Uh, he says that the you know from from the from the information that he had gotten, uh, there's a it's a it's a small fort. Uh, it's got a you know a palisade fence you know up around it and uh it should be you know a force about equal to the number that you were that you're actually bringing i mean he was hoping that you would have potentially outnumbered them but uh you know he says that, that this is you know, basically what you got and you know they have to go forward and at least make the attempt to uh take this place um, you know, so you're kind of anticipating that you're going to be, uh, clashing with a number that's fairly equal in size to your own. Um, he doesn't, he doesn't really reveal exactly what you're supposed to be getting once you get there or what he has an indication. He's, he's been kind of closed mouthed about that. Like, so you, you, you just know the target that you're going for. You don't know exactly what he's looking to 
loot from there or raid from there. Does he know of any small entry points where a few people could get in unnoticed and maybe create some kind of distraction like a small fire or if a way that a group could come in and unlock the gate from the inside. Well, he's actually Basically. never seen the fort, but he said, but if you wanted to, uh, you know, it might be a good idea to send some, like a, a small scout group, you know, like, you know, three to five people that would scout ahead and, um, you know, and see what they can see. Yeah, yeah, to do some recon on it. I'll volunteer to so do that. that. Okay. All right, so you're going to take uh, yourself and, and, you know, several men. You know, he, he, sa he tells you which guys to take, so you're going to take... Uh, you're going to take four other guys, so it'll be a group of five of you. Um, what's your hit points again? Or your, yeah, your health points? Uh, 26. 26. Yeah, that's right. You were, you were pretty darn hardy. Okay. Yes, and I played uh, an, a session or two with uh, Jared Halston when, since we played. So I've oh, okay. gone up a level or two. Okay, cool. All right, so you're going to move forward, and uh, yeah, you guys set out, and you, you know, you're fully geared up in your, um, you know, with your armor and your, you know, your weapons. Um, if there was any anything damaged from previously, when they, when you took the stuff off the other ship, you would have been able to replenish uh, any of the gear that you had with. Um, with at least the equivalent, um, the equivalent gear, but, uh, you know, in better repair. And you guys start moving forward. So as you head out, you're going to make a, um, I'll have you make a, a world lore check. All right, do you have, um, you probably don't have that skill, right? World lore? No, I don't. No. <clears throat> no. All right, so you can make that check there. Well, I rolled fairly high, a 16. All right, so an 11. All right, so you're going to make that roll. All right, so you can see that there's, you know, as you're, you know, as you're advancing forward and everything, you're, you're kind of, there's, there's obviously the dunes and there's, you know, there is some, some foliage, you know, uh, heavy bushes and things like that, that you can actually kind of, you know, uh, hang around in as you're making your way up. So between you know, some of the high dunes and, and some of the, you know, the sea brush, uh, you can advance, you at least believe you can advance as, you know, close as you will be able to, um, and get some, you know, easy or, or at least a, a better view of the place. Now, obviously, as you get even closer, you're going to, um, then have to resort to using stealth in order not to attract attention to you, even though it is, you know, early morning hours. So it's not like you can hide under the cover of night, but you can at least uh, stealth your way forward using terrain. And uh, stealth has a dexterity, and it's it's even untrained. It's it's still a plus zero, so you have no penalty for it. Okay. And my dexterity, I do have a plus one on dexterity. Okay, good, good. All right, so that's a 3d6 roll? Yes. All right. Doing that now. 
and one of them fell off again. Huh? <laughs> okay, let's see. That's eight. Um, 14 plus the plus one, 15. All right, 15. All right, so, yeah, so you start to advance, you know, even closer, and you start to see, um, you can see the, like, the vapor in the air, you know, from, you know, from fires that were probably burning over overnight, and, um, you know, so there, you know, you start to see the, the palisade, you know, as you're, you're coming up through the dunes and you start crouching lower and moving closer and, um, you know, you can see the displacement of the air from, you know, warmer air from, you know, like I said, probably cooking fires or, you know, nighttime fires. Um, and so you see the fence line. And you see the, you see it's approximately, it is like a small, you know, like a small fort, like a, almost an outpost uh, t style fort. Um, there is a, there is a slip that's uh, off into the, you know, off in the water. And uh, it looks like it's a, a fairly temporary slip. So it's not like a full you know, full thing. It looks like something that they could easily um, detach and then pull, uh, pull ashore if they needed to. Uh, there are no boats in the, you know, vicinity that you can see at this point. So, uh, and and based on the size of the slip, it's it's obviously, you know, has the capacity to hold. Uh, a, sh a ship similar to the size of what you guys are traveling in. So probably your typical Thulean uh, longboats, um, at least one or two uh, that could be put onto that same slip. Now you don't see any, like you don't see any sentries on the top of the Palisade wall. So you're, you're not quite sure uh, if there's a like a catwalk on the other side of it, but you, you can see it's a fairly, fairly tightly uh, woven uh, in uh, palisade wall. So there's not much of a gap uh, in between the fence line to actually see inside the place through it, uh, at least not at your initial vantage point. You don't see any any gaps or anything that you can see. Um, you're assuming that if there is a gate, because you're off to the side of it, you're assuming that if there is a gate, it would be on the water side, um, you know, the seaside of the uh, of the fort. All right. So, so yeah, what's your intentions at this point? So you said. <clears throat> The the slip is that like is that like a an is that like a waterway? Yeah, no, it's a, it's like a it's like a, a small like a dock, but it's a, a mo or like a removable dock or a floating dock. So it's like a oh, oh I see yeah I, like a boat slip yeah. And and so did you say that there was a visible entry point from that? Well, they're mostly, you're assuming that there is. You're assuming that if there is a gate into the uh, into the fortress, like through the palisades, it would be on the water side. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. But you're coming in from the side, so you you can't actually see it. You can see that the 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 palisade seems to to be a circular structure up around the long house and you could see the top portion of the long house uh you can see the smokestacks where there's you know there's obviously there was a burning fire um you know going there or or still burning because you can see the you know the vapor um and the displacement the the of the the air above it so there's obviously still fire burning inside and you don't see any any kind of sentries or anything on the fence line 
you know, so you're, you're not quite sure if there's a catwalk or not, um, you know, but there's clearly not any that you can see uh, guards or sentries looking over the palisade wall towards at least your side. Why don't I, myself, go to the floating dock and get a closer look to see if there's an entry point? I think that just one person would be okay. better, because if all five of us go, I think that could easily draw more attention and make okay. more noise. All right, so you, you start, and yeah, you can make another stealth roll. Right. And like I said, you're just trying to move in a, in a fashion that, uh, even though there isn't much cover, you're just trying to move in a fashion that it doesn't produce a lot of visibility. In other words, you're not like trying to draw attention to yourself. You're kind yeah. of moving. Not being seen and not making yeah. noise. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I got an eight and then my dexterity plus a one, so a nine. All right, so... You know, you're moving along, you're moving towards that dock area, and, you know, as you start coming around the bend, um, you know, and getting closer towards the shoreline, yes, you do, in fact, see a, um, you do, in fact, see the gate, and the, you know, you get to where the dock is, and uh, you can actually crouch down at that point there, and, and at least try to, you know, hide yourself a little bit. And uh, you do see the gate, and the gate is actually, you know, slightly ajar, you know, and it's it's slightly like on a on a, a tilt as well. So it looks like it's it's gotten unhinged at one point, and so it's it's laying ajar, um, which strikes you as being kind of odd that it would be in that that kind of condition. Can I, uh, without just being under cautious and just mm -hmm. entering, is is it open enough or cracked enough this damaged door that I can just kind of examine it, peer inside, kind of look on the other side of it? To yes. See if yeah. If you if you walk might up to it, there's a yeah, if you walk up to it, there's bait? yeah, there there's definitely a gap like on the the one corner where the you know the door has shifted to the side, you know, and so there's you know there is enough space that yeah. if you stayed oh, kind of low to the ground, you'd be able to see inside that small gap that was created. So it's almost like if I can, you know, if you can picture it. Right. So if I'm holding up the, if so the door I'll, is, if the door is hinged like this, all right, it's, it's off like a kilter like this. So it's hanging from here and the gap yes. that you have is down over here where, where the door is now like tipped upwards and to the side, you know, and obviously it's, it's it's tilted inward as well. So you'd be able to enter in through, or at least look through the gap that exists here. Yes. Yes. So I'll just, I'll just kind of look through, not enter yeah. just yet and see if I can, uh, see if there are any dangers on the other side or see if I can right. find out why the door will be left like this. Yeah. So, you start like looking in and you're looking about, um, you know, to see what you can see. And you, you see the, you could see the front of the long house and that too, it's, it's doors open and you see there's a, you know, you see at least one body. All right. That's, you know, it, it's all bloodied and, you know, and, you know, pretty mutilated looking from what you can see, you know, and there may actually be another body, you know, a little further up on the stair, 
um, staircase that you could also see. So it, it definitely looks like, you know, um, I mean, something certainly went down. So you, you can see the, the door has been, you know, the gate has been uh, damaged. Um, and there's certainly some bodies and, and you don't see any other movement, uh, you know, even though you're still just looking along the ground, you don't see any other movement, but you do see the two bodies. I think I'm going to take the team and go back to Torvik and report this and tell okay. him that it looks like somebody may have thought of exactly the same thing I did and somebody mm -hmm. may have beat us here. And there may be that, that group, that somebody, whether it's other raiders or our beasts mm -hmm. or whatever, may still be there. But okay. I, I think that uh, Captain Torvik should definitely know of this. Okay, so you tell them you you tell them what you've seen and everything, and um, he's going to he's going to tell everybody. All right, so we're we're going to take the we're going to take the two ships, and we're going to go up to the you know we're, we're going to move in closer then, and take the full complement in or or close to the full complement in. Um, just in case, and and so you guys are going to get back out on the boats, and you're going to, you know, sail up the the few more miles, uh, up towards the location. So so now this is probably like later in the afternoon. Um, you know, past the you know certainly past noon. You're, you're probably around two you know, two or three o'clock ish as the two as your two boats now move closer in and he's gonna anchor them slightly off offshore and um have you guys wait in again um from offshore and you do take you know you do take one of your uh long boats in with you uh, like a you know, heavy rowing boat uh, in with you as well um, because you're going to have to transfer, you know, if there is the loot that they're looking for, you're going to have to transfer that onto uh, the smaller rowboat. And so you pull that along um, and bring that ashore as well. So now you guys start amassing up on the, on the beach and so now there's probably about 40, you know, about 45 of you at this point. Do we have cover from, from where we're at still? No, there's no cover. There's, you know, you're just at the, you're on the beach now. So, you know, it's a wide open beach and there's still, you know, no challenge, no sound, nothing. Yeah, I meant from the fort, like... Yeah, there's... Are we, uh... Yeah, there's no... You're like, you're in full view of the fort, and there's no challenge coming from the fort. There's no, you know, anything. You guys are clearly right by the, the dock area, and, uh, you know, just lined up. You're just waiting for your order. So there's... Un so I was basically right to uh, report this to oh, Captain yeah. Torvik yeah. because there, it's highly unusual that there's we're in the middle of the day and there seems to be the place seems to be lifeless. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, he's just gonna he's gonna. I think I. Yeah. I think I want to. Uh, mention that to Captain Torvik yeah. that I just I have a concern. This is I'd like to talk to Torvik and say this is highly unusual. It's it's like yeah. the place is dead. Yeah, he's gonna you know he's gonna say we're gonna take uh 
He says, we're going we're gonna to send in um, a group to check the place out. So um, now he's not the kind to lead from behind. So he's going to take, he's going to go in with a group. He's going to leave, you know, probably about 20, you know, 20 at the docks and take 20 inside, you know, plus what you have on the, you know, on the ship. So you guys are going to go in with, uh, you know, Torvik, yourself, and about 20 or about 18 others. Now, when you, when you get to the, the gate and everything, you know, Torvik actually orders the guys to just, you know, shift the thing over a little bit so that you can then just pass right into the gate and then they start you know they start fanning out your obviously all of you have your weapons drawn and you're just prepared to see so once you get inside yeah you start looking about and everything and um you know you still have your group of four guys with you and uh you know you have the long house and then some side some side structures next to the um you know, next to the Palisade fence. Uh, you do notice that there is a catwalk actually on the, you know, on the inner portion of the fence. So there was nobody on, you know, obviously nobody on the catwalk that you can see. And there are the two bodies in front of the, you know, of the long house. So just uh, let me know what you're you're doing at this point. I'm just uh, sticking close to the captain and uh, really trying to watch his back. All right. And, and I'm really just looking around and, and trying to find any clue for why this unusual situation presents itself. Are you going to take a look at the... You gonna take a look at the bodies at all, or would that be like foraging? Would that be related to that? Um, let's see. That's an interesting foraging question. Skill. Let's see. Uh, you can take a look. Um, actually, if you're looking at the, it could actually be like close to like a medical type skill. So maybe even healing. So you could use healing. Yeah, I don't have that as a skill, but I, mm -hmm. I could... You could try. <laughs> yeah. So, it, you know, without a healing, uh, it's intelligence minus five uh, without a trained skill in it. Okay. I do have a plus one to it. Yeah, so, so, so it would just be a minus one. four. Yeah. yeah. Let's see... Eleven. Oh, that's not bad. Oh, wait, no, just ten. Just ten. Sorry. Oh, just ten. So, so you rolled a ten. Yeah. So and yeah. then minus four would be a six. Yeah. I mean, you're looking at the body, and you could see that the the body is is you know certainly, you know, torn apart. It's like dismembered, you know, and. Other than that, you re you really can't tell like what, you know, what actually was used for it. You know, clearly like not a weapon. There, none of the wounds are very clean wounds. Um, you know, but but you really don't know. Like you can't imagine what it. You know, what could have done it. I'd like to mention to Captain Torvik that this is, I didn't want to jump to conclusions earlier, but now that I look at this, I had had a thought that we could be dealing with something not human. 
Yeah, and and he'll take a look at it as well. Like he's looking, and you know, some of the other people are looking as well. Um, let me see. Yeah, all he all he manages to say too is yeah, he says these you know these bodies certainly weren't killed by by weapons that you know I've seen anything like you know so the the wounds are just you know he said that they they do look like some kind of an animal or beast you know has been at them but he can't tell for sure he he doesn't recognize you know, anything that he can, he could stay more clearly than that. Just that weapons, just like yourself, weapons just don't seem to have been used um, to kill these guys. And both have similar wounds. All right, so you have the longhouse, you know, in front of you. He sends some of the guys to look at the, you know, the side buildings you know, to check out the side buildings. So now there's there's probably about 10 of you that he's looking to just take right into the longhouse. Is there only one entrance to the longhouse? Or yeah, yeah there's the main time? entrance and that, and that was the entrance that was left also, you know, open. A longhouse, typically, don't they have uh, something on the roof, you know, for smoke? And yeah, that's escape? that's uh, yeah, that's up on top. So you're, you know, it's a, you know, it, it's got a, a, you know, obviously a steepled roof, you know, and um, you know, then it arcs down. It's it's a heavy wooden structure, you know. It, it's it's you know, a, a permanent structure. So it's a, you know, a pretty well-made um, structure. The doors were, were fairly heavy doors, and yet they're, you know, they're ajar. I mean, the the gate is, you know, the gate was a, was a fairly, you know, a fairly sturdy thing too, but that was shifted out of place as well you know so um you know it if you take a look at the gate like so if you're looking if you gave close inspection of the gate uh let's see so that's where you could use your crafting Just skill real quick go ahead i have acrobatic as a character role skill okay and then forging as a train skill. So what if I were to suggest to the captain that maybe I try to get up onto the roof and look down through the, the, the ventilation hole? Um, you know that there's a fire burning inside. I mean, because you could still see the smoke going up. So yeah. you, you wouldn't actually be able to probably look down and see you know it's like you'd be sticking your face into a smoke hole and oh. um yeah you wouldn't be able to really you know be able to see much um much more than just taking a, a look through the front door or what about kind of you know poking a little hole in the thatch and just kind of looking yeah, no, this is a heavy wood structure. It's not a, oh, it's not like a thatch structure. Unless okay. you're talking about the roof. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, what I meant. All right. Um, I mean, you could try it. You could try to see what you can you can see. So you you would do an acrobatics uh, or climbing. Actually, you do a climbing roll, um, which is dexterity plus zero. So. Um, Okay, and I have plus one to dexterity. Yeah, so. Okay, so I'll do that. 
What's my target? It's not very difficult to fit, you know, probably an eight as well. So your target's an eight. Let's see. Nine, 11, and then my dexterity plus one, 12. 12. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so... Yeah, you're able to get, you know, climb up and get onto the the lower portion of the thatch and, and then, you know, make your way up a little bit further. So it's not, uh, it's not a very difficult climb. And again, no sounds, no, no challenges, nothing. You're, you know, the place seems to be, you know, pretty dead. So you get up to where the smoke hole is and you do see, um, you do see, you know, the, the vapor rising up, but it's not like, it's not like super intense, you know, so you are actually able to, you know, look down inside and you could see the, you know, you can see the pit and it's just embers, you know, and so the the smoke rising is is just from the embers, or or the, you know, the heat vapor, is, is just from embers. It's not a full blown, you know, burning fire. Basically, that's all I can see is just just the fire pit. Yeah, you could just see the fire pit. Nothing, you know. Um, I mean, unless you wanted to lean in, um, and that's where you could do your acrobatic roll. Is if you're going to lean in and try to hold on to the edge and look in, then you can do an acrobatic roll and attempt that. Yeah, and I have that as a character roll. Right. So I'll you... go ahead and try. It. All right. And that is, it shows that as uh, related to dexterity, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, yes, it's dexterity. Even untrained, it's a plus zero. Okay. Let's see. 10, 12, and then my dexterity plus one, 13. 13. Okay. So yeah, you, you grab a hold of the edge and you kind of lean over and you, you kind of just poke your head in and uh, you're looking about and you can see that there's, you know, there, there are some long tables and you do see some signs of, of some more bodies on the inside. You don't see any movement. Mm. I think I've I've seen enough. Hmm. I'll uh, go back down and report to Torvik that uh, still very suspicious that yeah. it seems uh, the fire has basically been left to die, as you said. It's just yeah. embers. There's almost no activity in there, and there does appear to be signs of a struggle inside. Yeah, so and that there's at least one there's at least one body in there. Yeah, so he says so that's my report. All right, so he says, "All right, we're going in." And so he just walks, you know, straight up and and goes inside. Everybody else, you know, follows along with him, you know, and you just get inside there and you do see some more but you know, some more bodies on the floor. You see that there's the um, there there is like one tall chair, you know, tall back chair sitting at the table, and there's a uh, there's a corpse sitting in the tall chair as well. All right, and uh, also, you know, showing signs of that same kind of mutilation and such. So there's, you know. No weapons, you know, like, I mean, no, like, it doesn't look like they were killed with weapons. All right, so now you start, like, you know, he orders some of the men to open up the side windows, you know, to let some more light into the, you know, into the place and to, um, you know, leave the fire as is. He doesn't want to, 
attract any attention and uh he orders some of the you know some of the other guys to spread the word to um you know to to come on inside and to start securing this place up um and then he just starts you know just walking around and looking around and tells you to do the same thing to look around and and see if you spot anything um I mean, he kind of says out of the ordinary, but the point is, is that, you know, so far everything that you've seen is out of the ordinary. But, uh, yeah, so you guys are going to just start looking about and and so this would be a foraging role. Would my, uh, as I'm looking about, would foraging come into play here? Yes. Okay. So I guess I could, would I be making a foraging roll then? Yes. All right. Yeah, so you guys are got, like basically just searching the place out. All right. Let's see, a 10, and it says foraging is related to intelligence. I have an intelligence plus one, so 11 total. So you're looking about, and you can see that, uh, I mean, you do find some weapons on the floors, you know, mostly by these bodies, you know, so you do see that there's, you know, there was obviously a fight, and, um, you know, they obviously lost the fight, but they, they certainly, you know, did have their weapons out, they, they certainly did fight, you see some, you know, some overturned furniture, you see some broken furniture. You see that the, uh, you know, the doors, you know, the doors had been forced inward. Um, you know, so they they were pushed in and 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 forced inward on you know on the guys trying to hold, you know, hold hold whoever out. Um, I want you to make another roll. This time, I want you to make a perception roll. All right, so that's intelligence uh, plus zero. Okay. Okay, so nine, and then adding my intelligence plus one, uh, 10. All right, 10. All right, you notice by the door, you notice by the door that the, um, you know, even though the doors have been like dislodged, they've been like, they've been opened up. Mm -hmm. You can, you can see that um, it looks more like, like something was digging underneath the door. So almost like a like a dog would dig underneath the door. This would be one uh, really demonic dog. So I'm gonna obviously report that back to Torvik. Yeah, and and it looks as if you know some others are looking about to, and they they notice that the. You know, at the site of of the door where you know something was obviously digging and 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 gaining entry through that way, that they do see plenty of um, plenty of blood and everything in or and around the you know that area of the flooring. So uh, you know the you know because it is a, a packed earth flooring, so it is dug up, but there you know there's certainly you know, signs of blood in the, uh, you know, in the dirt up and around the doors. So, you know, they start to conjecture that was like if something was digging its way in, this is where the defenders, you know, had killed some of them, but they still managed to keep on coming 
and keep on forcing their way in. Could this have been some kind of some kind of etin or, or like a some kind of monstrous bear? Well, you'd have to you'd have to make a roll on um, yeah. You can make another roll for that would still be world lore. Okay. okay so you make a world That's... lore roll. And that's uh, minus five. Mm -hmm. Let's see, I got a ten, which the minus five would make that a five, yeah. and then my intelligence plus one would make that a six. Yeah, no, you, you really can't tell anything like that. I mean, I mean, Etten's. Yeah, I wouldn't even know if you you actually would know what an Etten, you know, um, or any variations of them would be. Um, I mean, they're they're certainly the the size of the holes are, you know, about human sized holes, like being dug underneath. So it could be a large dog kind of thing or something around that size, not big enough to you know not big enough for a bear certainly something smaller right. than a bear and so everybody's still picking around and and looking and you can make another perception roll all right Nine and uh, plus one with my intelligence modifier, that'd be a ten. All right. All right, you noticed you noticed that uh, Torvik is paying some attention to um an object that's on one of the tables. Um, and he's like turning it around and looking at it and, you know, he just seems to be spending a lot of time looking over this, this particular object. I just, uh, We'll go to Torvik and just ask him, sir, what have you found? Let me see. He looks a little bit like, he looks a little bit like almost nervous to you, you know, and... He says, um, he just shakes his head and then he says, you know, what we came for here is not, is not here anymore, you know, and, and you, like when you look at the object that he was looking at, it looks like a, um, it's not quite a box, but it, it's like a, you know, it is a wooden um, a wooden structure, like a a casing that's been split open, and there's you know, but it wasn't like a like a box kind of shaped thing, you know, it was kind of a a strangely shaped thing. Um, you're you're kind of trying to figure out how it would go together, you know, but it's um, you know, it's definitely wooden. It's it's definitely it was almost like a a conical shaped type object you know very smooth on the outside all right and you you do notice some symbols carved into it 
but you don't know the, um, well, you could always make a rune lore. Um, okay, I don't have that as yeah, a skill, yeah, so I'm not real high on that. Yeah. Well, let's see. Nine, ten, and then uh, my intelligence plus one, eleven. Eleven minus five, so that would be... Six um, again. Uh, yeah, so that would be a six. So now you really can't, you know, you don't recognize the runes at all. You're, you know, but you, you could tell that there's certainly something carved into them, some kind of a you know, some kind of a, a uh, whether it be an image or a symbol or, you know, possibly lettering of some kind. But uh, you don't recognize it. And Torvik doesn't, uh, doesn't even mention the runes at all. He just, like, looking over the, the, the casing and he just leaves it there. Um He said he starts ordering some of the men to just round up all the, you know, the weapons and whatever they have. He wants uh, men on the catwalks, and um, he says we'll keep on looking around because there's there's the central room that you've spent most of your time in, uh, and then there's a there's a flight of stairs like a, a stair that goes to the next level. You know, so, uh, and then there's some side, you know, looks like there's some side rooms off the main structure. Um, and none of you have actually gone up into those rooms yet. First, um, I'll go to Torvik and I'll volunteer to have a look in this upper level. Mm -hmm. But I want to ask him about those inscriptions. Okay. See, uh, just tell him that I'm, I'm curious about those inscriptions and ask, does he, do they mean anything to him? He says, he says, no, he said, uh, he says, I was just told that, the, you know, this is what, you know, this is what we were hired to get. And he says, you know, I was told to get a strange cask-like, uh, you know, object with runes carved into it, but no description other than that. He says, and it appears that it's been, you know, it's been opened and there's, you know, whatever was inside, uh, is is clearly gone. Well, then I'll, uh, like I said, volunteer to go have a look upstairs. Yeah. So you do I'll go. Have permission to take other men with me. Yeah, you take your, you know, your your typical group of, you know, four guys along with you, and you start heading upstairs and you start poking around upstairs and uh looking into some places and you see there's there's some stores there's some you know um you know some typical items of 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 storage um kind of strange that the storage is on the upper level um but there are some other rooms you know so you, you do see some cots and things like that where you know people obviously slept uh you know, up there as well. Um, but nothing, you know, in the few rooms that you've looked in so far, nothing really strikes you as being, you know, particularly valuable or, you know, interesting or anything like that. It's just the whole situation seems to be kind of bizarre to you. Uh, and there's, there's, um, I mean, there's no bodies up there. There's, there's nothing. There's nothing that uh, that that shows you like an indication of 
like Torvik was was expecting that this was going to have you know quite a lot of people, and you don't really see that many signs. I mean, you've you know in all there's only been about ten bodies in the entire place, uh, you know, out, out exterior as well of the longhouse discovered. What about uh, within the fort? What about you know other buildings? Should well, yeah, they like the, yeah, they they've been around, like looking around and everything, and there doesn't seem to be, you know, there's just not that many bodies. There's there's only about ten overall that you guys have discovered from the time that you came in, looking into side buildings and looking throughout the longhouse. There's, you know. You've only found about, you know, five bodies inside the longhouse, you know, on the steps on the outside and and three on the inside. And then uh, in the exterior in, in a, you know, a few of the um a few of the side buildings, they've they found like another five bodies. So total about 10. I'd like to speak to Torvik. It seems to me that obviously whatever this creature is that attacked here, it obviously came through that uh, that sea passage where the door was for, where the yes. entry, the, and the door was forced there. And similarly, whatever this creature was, it forced its way by digging underneath into the longhouse. So its entry point was that uh, that water passage at the, uh, the portable dock. So it yes. seems that it's some kind of sea, some kind of aquatic creature. Just I'm basically telling him that that's kind of a thought that I have. Okay. All right. So So you've been in this in this place now for about probably 3 hours, you know, and it's starting to become evening and um he um he says we're go we're going to go back on to the uh we're gonna go back onto the ships. He doesn't want to stay inside the inside the place, he says, because whatever came in here, you know, obviously got through, you know, to the places. So uh we're gonna go back to our ships and you know and get you know wait till the morning to come back and and look over the place again. So um you guys get onto your uh you get you know you start making your way towards the boats and you get onto you know you take your um the rowboat that you took there was no real valuable loot to actually carry you know over to it uh i mean some supplies and stuff like that but uh nothing nothing of any real you know value uh to bring there yet and so you get over to your um, to your boats, and you know he takes them further. You know he has both ships actually go further out off the shore, you know into deeper water, you know, and then drop anchor again. So what are you thinking about doing? I'm thinking uh, going to use my uh, seamanship uh, mm -hmm. character role skill okay. to uh, go up in the rigging and maybe from that vantage point try to have a look around the uh, the water 
you know, pertaining to my theory that something came from the water and did this. All right, so you, you go up into can... the... Yeah, so you can make it your uh, seamanship roll. And that's intelligence, so I'll get a plus one for that. Let's see. Okay. What is it with me and nines today? Uh, nines and sixes. Uh, so a nine with my intelligence plus one, that's ten. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, so you start, like, you know, you're looking out across the water, you know, and um, you're actually probably up in the, you know, up at the crow's nest type uh, structure, although it's not yeah. like a full-blown crow's nest type thing. It's just a, you know, it's a place for you to stand up and you can hold and you can kind of turn around and look around and everything. Um, so you start looking around and... Sure. You start you start panning your vision across the, you know, you know across the waterline in you know in an arc around, and you're you're turning and you're looking straight out to sea and then off to the, you know, from the area that you first came from, and as you complete your 360 view, you know, and you start coming back across the, uh, you know, the shoreline now and then the fort and and such, and off to the right of the fort, you kind of glimpse, you kind of glimpse like a, you know, a, like a, a, a strange, like almost like a mist, like a greenish, you know, phosphorescent mist kind of um, thing. And, you know, then it, it disappears. So it, it was almost like a, you know, almost like a like a swamp gas kind of misty thing, um, and then it disappears. That was the only thing out of the ordinary that you saw. Well, I'm obviously going to report this to Torvik. Mm-hmm. Tell him that I saw a, a strange type of a, a miasma, a green mm-hmm. miasma. Mm-hmm. Uh, just in near the water, and you said it was just off to the right of where of the fort, this creature yes. was entering. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. but right around that uh, where that portable dock was, where the whatever this was entered. Yeah, it was actually behind the fort and off to you know the oh, okay. you know off to the right. Hmm. So yeah, I'll definitely report that to Captain Torbeck. All right. So he says, um, he says, well, we'll take the, we'll take the boat and we'll go take a look at it. He says, uh, gets, he says, let's bring, uh, we'll bring 10 men with us, get some torches you know, everybody suit up, you know, in uh, in gear, and we're going to get to the bottom of what's going on here. All right, and so you guys all get into the longboat, and you row that ashore, and you start moving, you know, moving out, and you have your torches going, and you start making your way. Like he tells you to show where, where you guys had seen, you know, where you had seen, you know, the stuff. So obviously I, I show him the, the exact area. Yeah. You, you kind of like walk into the general area of where you, you know, where you thought you saw it. And yeah, as you approach that area and everything, you're you're kind of, you know, everyone has torches and you're looking about. And you can make a uh, make a roll. This is a perception roll. So it'll be right. plus uh plus 1 uh for intelligence. Yeah. 
I will be right back. Sure. Okay. Okay. So, all right. So you're like, you guys are kind of sp spreading out a little bit and we are going to roll for initiative. So you're going to roll for your whole party and, um, we so, found the creature. Well, you, you'll find out in a moment. <laughs> so, yeah, oh, you'll um, yeah. So you're you're gonna roll for initiative, and well, so, that's, so that's just a, a, that's a D6. D six. Yeah, that's right. a single D six. Um, three. All right. So you rolled a three. Now that has pluses. Um, just so you, you know, just to remind you. So rolling for initiative. So it's a D6, and then dexterity will be a plus one. Um, so basically a four. Yeah, so if you have... Um, if you have a talent of good reflexes or aggressive, that's also a plus, uh, plus for that as well. Um... Initiative modifiers for melee, if you're using a long melee weapon, it's like long swords, uh, or javelins, flails, or war uh, axes, it's a plus two, plus four, using a very long reaching weapon. Um, like a spear? Like a, like a spear, yes. Okay, so, I do have a spear. All right, so you would be a plus four, so... You would be a seven then. Okay. So we'll just remember that your initiative is plus four. All so right. if I roll a three and I'm plus four and that's a seven. And then and your dexterity bonus. For dexterity. All right. So that's an eight then. That would be. Okay. An, okay. All right. Yeah, that's an eight then. All right. And. Okay, and I rolled. Um. 
Okay. All right. Um, you are going to go first. All right. All right. So, something you're not quite sure yet flashes out. Um, and it's got like a like a greenish phosphorus, like almost like a like a weird glow to it. Um, okay. You know, you're you're not quite sure what what is giving it this glow, whether it's the moonlight on it or you know just something. But uh, it's it's probably about. Um, you don't get a like a really great view of it. It's it's probably about five feet tall and um moves fairly fast. Um you know, so certainly faster than a uh you know, faster than a person. Um not as you know, you're able to re react to it a little bit quicker, at least the one closest to you. Um And that's mostly because of the advantages of your spear, you know, that you're actually able to get a good reach on it. Okay. So, am I so, attacking now? Um, no, the next thing you're going to do is, because it is a strange creature, you are going to make a morale roll first. Okay. All right. Is that a uh, 3v6? Modifications to morale test, yes. Okay, it's 3D6. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We lost oh, one of them fell. Hold on. Uh, play it as it lies. Uh, an 11. Okay. And uh, if it's if it's relevant, I have plus ones to uh, everything except willpower. Okay. So uh, you're you're uh, fine. You made, your, you made your major check. All right. So you're okay. you're okay with it. So you can make your attack. All right. And that's about 3d6 as well, right? Mm -mm. Oh. Yes, your attack roll, yes. Okay. And will my plus one to strength figure into this? Uh, for, the, for the hit, yes. Not for the damage. Okay. Yeah. So, five plus four, nine, with the plus one to strength, ten. All right, so you're, um, so the defensive value, ME plus 11, ME plus, yeah, you actually miss it. All right, so, yeah, you, you just barely miss it. It just dodges you. All right, um, so let's see who's next. Torvik is actually going to attack. Um, he misses as well. Um, one of your your crewmen actually attacks. What the heck? How do I get a pop up on my iPad? Uh, ooh, he hit. All right, so he hit with a sword. He's going to do four points of damage. All right, so, yeah, one of your crewmen actually, you know, struck at one of them, and, um, and he hit. All right, the rest of your... The rest of your group actually missed. They're, you're not quite sure how many. There's more than one of them. 
you're not quite sure how many of them there are, but they, they are like zipping in through your group fairly, you know, fairly quickly. Um, so they come in, they, they attack. So one, two, this is a simultaneous attack. So three, D six, and let's see, uh, that can't be right. Clear. All right, he hit as well. Okay, it's their it's their attacks at this point. So let's see if you So you're number six. There are six of you in your group here. All right, so it is attacking. One, two, three. So him. And let me just, uh, I'm just checking to see who each is attacking. Oh, one is attacking you. Okay. All right. Um, the first one's attacking him. Oof. Wow. That is a good hit. Not on you. <laughs> on one of your crew members. Second attack. And now the one attacking you. What's your uh, what's your defensive value uh, for melee? Thirteen. Thirteen. So. Nope, he missed you. All right, so one of your guys gets hit, and he takes a pretty decent hit, actually. Um, he might actually have to check to see if he got knocked down. Yeah, so uh, he's still he's still up, but he did, you know, the thing jumped on him, clawed at him, you know, um, you know, and then it disengaged and and moved off. All right, it's uh, it's next round, your turn to go. All right. Yeah. So. Okay, an 18 wow. with strength plus one, so 19. A 19. So that yeah. is, um, you needed, you need an 11 to hit them. So you did plus eight. That's an excellent hit. You're going to do plus six in damage. Okay. My spear is a D8 plus one. Mm -hmm. I'm rolling my D8 now. And 
and I got a four with plus one five. So five and then whatever and you said as plus six, so you're doing eleven points of damage. Okay, actually only ten points of damage, so it's uh All right, you want to describe your hand? Wait, you too? said, uh, well, wait, you, you said uh, it, it was 11 required? It's an 11 to, to hit, to... yes. And, and then you rolled a 19. 19 total. So that's an 8 so that's greater eight. than defensive, so it's a plus 6 in damage. It's an excellent hit. Okay. That's a plus 6. Okay. All right. So you did overall okay. 10 so... points of damage. Uh, do you want to describe your hit? Wait, uh, you said plus six. I rolled a four, and uh, the spear is a D8 plus one, so five plus six. So five plus six is eleven. All right, but it has it yeah. has toughness, you know. So it it does have oh, like a oh, like okay. a yeah, it does have a defensive value, you know, uh, an armor value, you know. So it's, oh, oh, okay. uh, yeah, okay. so so it has an armor value of one, so it reduces damage by one. All right, so, and, uh, so you want to describe your hit. All right, you killed it. So I <laughs> just wanted to, you know, if you want to describe your, your hit, like how you hit it or, you know, what you were looking to do. Okay, um, I was just mainly just thrusting at a, and a mist, these things, these mist monsters, mm -hmm. but hitting it dead center, it actually felt as though I was hitting a solid mass, but almost gelatinous, yeah. almost. But I definitely, mm -hmm. it, you, I, it didn't feel like stabbing a cloud. It felt like yeah. stabbing an actual thing. Yes. And All it right. shrieked and dissipated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it, it does like it, you know. So yeah, you 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 pierce it through what what you're assuming is like its its chest, and um, yeah, the, the mist does drip off, but there is still a a physical form, you know, that's on the on the ground, and you you know you put your foot down and you pull your spear out of it. You know, and then you just ready yourself for, you know, for the next, you know, the next attack. And you know what? This thing is taking me longer than it would be for me to just roll my dice. <laughs> so. Like with the rate way I've been rolling tonight, uh, probably better for me to be using physical dice than a dice app because I'm yeah, yeah, no, the dice, the dice, dice app is just taking me too long to do anything. Um, so ten minus a no, that's like maybe I should have gone to the casino. Yeah, so let's see, Torvik is going to attack. And that's ten no. Something's kind of missing. Oh, here we go. Another hit. All right, so he hit. Oof. One of your guys hit um Okay, they're going to attack. That's barely four. Wow. Fifteen.
Oof. All right, one of the, you know, one of these misty little creature things um, gets a hold of one of your crew members and it does, you know, it tears him to shreds. Like it just, you know, you're, you're not sure if it's, it's just its claws. It's almost like the, the mist itself uh, tears, you know, tears at him as well. Um, you know, so it, it's definitely killed one of your guys. Um, Has anyone else killed any of them besides me? No, you're the only one that's, uh, you're not the only one that's hit, but you're the only one that's killed, killed one. All right. Oh. Um, so we're going to roll initiative again. So you're still at the plus four. Okay. Uh, four plus four, eight total. All right, so you're going to go first. Now, uh, I was looking, and it said that uh, on page, on two in version 2.7, it's page mm -hmm. 50, uh, it says that one-handed, uh, some one-handed weapons, including the sh uh, short axe, can be wielded two-handed for a plus one. For a plus one to hit? Uh, damage, I believe. Let me... Let me no, sure melees, melees don't add damage unless... Uh... Ah, here I found it. Um, all one-handed weapons can be effectively wielded with two hands, giving plus one to weapon damage and minus one to men, uh, minimum strength. Okay. Yeah so, yeah, so if the minimum strength is, let's say, a, you need a plus one, um, it would make it a zero, wielding it two-handed. Um, <laughs> excuse me. So yeah, but that doesn't apply to a spear anyway. Yeah, I was well. I was yeah. going to use my hand axe. Is is why I brought that up. And the hand axe is a D eight. So if it had a plus one, it would basically just be the same as my spear. Uh, yeah, D8 you just you one. would lose the you would lose the plus four bonus on initiative though. Oh yeah, you yeah. I I'm think I'll, yeah. I'll stick with my spear. All right. I'm attacking now. Let's see. Another nine. What is it with me and nines tonight? So nine and then plus one is for ten. strength. So ten. Ten, yeah, you missed. They're kind of they're kind of quick. So now let's see. Oh, I need to roll a d10 because now that one of them is dead, one of your one of your guys is dead. They're gonna change their. All right, so. All right, neither of them are attacking you. Um, Corvic attacks. Well, he's not. He's not been lucky. He's not been hitting well. Five, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. He did hit. Let's 
15. Three of your guys hit so far. He didn't do much damage, though. All right, your turn. All right. Did any of them kill one? No, but they have uh, two of them. Two more of them have been injured uh, during the All attack, right. and they didn't hit any of your. Actually, one of them hit your guy, but not. Uh... So, six, five, eleven, with my strength plus one, twelve. Twelve? All right, that hits. Um, that's only uh, a, it's just a regular hit, regular damage. Okay. Uh, four plus one, five. I will just see here. Let's see. Which one did you hit? All right. You hit him. So it's going to be four. So you did four points of damage to him. He's still up. All right. And he's just like, ow. Yeah. They both missed. All right. Um, Torvik. Oh, he finally had. All right. Oof. One of the other crew members just killed one. Woohoo! All right, and that's it. So, your turn now. And I'm, drop, I'm just throwing these dice everywhere. Okay. Six plus four. Is 10 with my strength plus one, 11. That hits. Barely. Mm. Yes, just. Okay, so rolling my D8 plus one. Uh, it's a three plus one, so four. So that's a two. Okay, it is still still up and just another Torvik hit, yeah. Torvik hit it. And he's a name one. Torvik killed the last one. Oh. Alright, so So he kills the last one. So you guys, um, well, you tell me, what are you going to do next? So you were attacked by what appears to be three of them. Um, you've killed all three. One of your guys uh, has been killed. One of your crew members is, you know, pretty injured. He's actually, you know, pretty harmed, um. Uh, probably a hit or two away from one of these things of being dead himself. And you said that when these things die, they take corporeal form. Yeah, they, 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 they were actually corporeal to begin with. It's just that they're, they're much smaller than what their outer vapor self, you know, actually appears, you know? So you don't think that they've been like fully, they weren't fully missed you know, to begin with. It's just that, that the mist gave them a slightly larger size. 
um, once, you know, once and, dead, they now yeah, have once a full dead, it, Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So once dead, the the mist kind of dissipates and it just leaves the the body, you know, behind. I uh, examine each of them in turn, and uh, I don't know. Could I use foraging to do that? Uh, no, you would use. Um, I mean, looking at them because you're trying to determine what they are. So it's a, a where's the skill list? It's, it's still it's still a world lore um, okay. because you're trying to figure out what these things are. Um, All right. Okay, six, seven, plus one for intelligence, eight. Eight, so you're looking at but it. it minus, it's minus yeah. five. Oh, it's a minus five. Oh. Yeah, so. Yeah, because it would only be a three. I mean, all, all you can really though. tell is that it's, it's, you know, obviously not a human creature. It's uh, it's a bipedal creature, um, and it's you know it, it's probably about you know between a little taller than four feet, a little slightly less than five feet tall. Um, all three were roughly the same size. Um, kind of hard to describe it it's like almost like a like a hairless dog like creature like a chup chupacabra yeah like you don't really like you've never heard or seen anything like it before yeah. what we would imagine as a in our world would imagine the chupacabra but they would have yeah. no yeah it, it's 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 you know it's not scaled like scaled skin it's a smooth skinned you know grayish greenish kind of coloration of it um it's got a snout with you know with fangs you know um canine teeth fangs um, it does have clawed, you know, clawed hands and the, um, you know, other than that, I mean, there's, there's just, you know, almost like dog ears to it, you know, so it does have mm. like pointy ears, you know, to it, but not a, you know, just nothing that, that matches anything you've ever, you know, heard of. You know, and it's kind of disturbing to look at them, you yeah. know, and, and then there, that mistiness about them was kind of odd too. So, so I asked Torvik if he knows what these things are and if he thinks that they might have taken the item and why. Yeah, he, um, he says, I, I, you know, he, he says, I have no idea, he says, but what we're going to do is we're going to take these things with us, um, is at least one of them with us along with that, uh, along with that object from the thing and we're going to head back to, um, to his employer and then he's going to you know present that guy with the stuff you know with the items and see if it could salvage some kind of a uh you know some kind of a reward for at least returning these things in very well all right so you guys go back to the ship and you you know start rigging up and and the captain tells you that he wants to set sail you know you know now even at night um 
and start making your way. He says that the sooner we can clear this place, you know, the better he feels uneasy about hanging about and seeing how many more there happen to be, you know, of these things. All right, so you can do your, your last, uh, you know, seamanship check. Plus one. Uh, had to make a save there as it was mm -hmm. falling off the table. Oh, God, it went behind the thing. I don't know where it went. Oh, got it. Okay. Uh, another nine. What is it okay. with me in nines? Nine plus one, ten. All right. That's enough to get you guys underway, so... You guys start setting sail and you head, you know, you travel through the, you know, you go, you sail through the night. And uh, if you recall, it took, it took about three days to get here. Um, you know, so you guys start heading out and you, you, you dock along the way, you stop off, you know, on shore, you know, along the way and you guys do pull back into your home port and Torvik kind of leaves everybody behind and he does take you along with him and he makes you his, you know, he's going to make you his first mate um, for his next voyage. And that's why he brings you along with him um, to go see. And you meet with this. You meet with this guy. They they don't exchange any names at all um, with this particular guy. He's a Thulian, and you know, kind of an older, older kind. Of, you know, older gentleman. Um, wears like nondescript robes. So no coloration that would make him, you know, make him appear to be a noble or a, you know, he's wearing just, you know, standard brown, you know, brown type robes. So um, although you, you get the sense that he's a higher social class than what he's dressed as, but um, he seems to be dressed in a, you know, dressing down, you know, um, you know, which is which a is wizard, perhaps. Well, he he he's just not dressed like you can tell that he's he's certainly a nobleman, but he's not wearing mm. the colors of a nobleman. Um, he's he's wearing colors of like a merchant or a common person. So, and that's that's kind of odd for Thulians who, you know, they tend. You know they tend to wear, and it's it's really part of the social structure that they they wear um, the colors of their social status. Um, but he is clearly not. So um, he pays. You know he pays Torvik. Uh, he, he he hands him a um, a small chest. All right, he takes the. He takes the body out of one of the creatures and he takes the the casing. Um, he doesn't really mention anything about what was, you know, what was inside it, what he anticipated to be inside it or anything. He's just willing to accept the casing, the body, and he gives a, a chest. He doesn't express any kind of displeasure or... <coughs> You know, um, any disappointment that you can tell. And, um, <coughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, Torvik takes the, you know, takes the chest. And you guys, you know, you head back off to the thing and uh, back off to the ship. And in the captain's, you know, the captain's cabin, you know, he starts going through the going through the chest and 
he starts divvying out what the what the various shares are going to be and uh you end up you end up picking up a a full gold piece all right as your share you know of the uh or a you know a gold nugget uh they don't use <laughs> yeah they don't use coins uh you 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 get a a full gold nugget uh for your for the part that you have played all right so basically just uh, one one unit of gold of gold yes yeah one unit yeah. of gold measurement um which is actually a pretty you know a pretty decent amount of uh treasure you know for yeah. you know for this thing so you're still kind of like it still strikes you as kind of weird the way the whole thing ended and you know you're not quite sure what Torvik knows you know but um but you kind of anticipate that maybe you know someday down the line you know you might actually be clued in it as, as to what was going on because everything was very mysterious about you know this whole you know the second half of the adventure you know um yeah you don't know the person that he was dealing with you don't know what you were really looking for and you know he's not open at all to talking about it um but you do get the sense you know in due time um you know you may discover down the road uh what you know what this was all about all right so that's pretty much it so looking at the number of um six one two three successful roles um that's quite a bit so adventure wise uh let's see played for a little over two hours and i forget how we broke down that um How we broke down the end of a quest the last time. Hmm. Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm I'm looking for the breakdown that we did the last time. Um as far as why don't I have that here? Let me see. I have well, what I'll do is I'll figure it out. Um, I know we did 25, 25 per successful roll. So you had 14 successful rolls at 25 points per. Then you got 100 per hour. So. You said 25 uh, times 14. Yeah, so that's 350. Roll. So 550, 600. 600 XP. Total. Total. And then that's, that's not counting for quest completion. Oh yeah, that's right. We did that extra. What was that? Two hundred for test completion. So eight hundred total. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So eight hundred total. Which is not bad because I think uh, it it takes about four hundred 
each to increase and I'll, I'll double check and look at the the rule book um i think it takes about 400 to train something uh yeah. up to a first level of training of it so you'd actually probably pick up like two two skills from the completion of this uh adventure which is not bad yeah. and i'll calculate it uh tomorrow morning but i think that probably will level me up because i think i'm right at the cusp of going up to level five so that should be enough to level me up to take me up okay. to level five cool all right so um i mean bottom line like you know just as a you know as as a cap off on the on the adventure you know you your next adventure will take you deeper into this storyline you know so i don't want you to feel like it's it's like boom it's it's stopped and there's you know there's there's still some mystery to be revealed yeah. so you know the next step will be um you know i mean you could direct it you could basically say you know this is what i really want to do you know so we'll have like a almost like a zero session and say well this is where i'd like to go with this you know you could choose to say i want to find out who this guy was or i want to find out where these things came from or i want to find you know so once you tell me like which is your preference then i could start you know thinking about all right how do we go there because you know i have a general sense of where you know the end game of this campaign is but um you know i like for the player to have some input in kind of like the the branching off yeah. you know of the actual quest it's almost like one of those endless quest novels where you get to choose yeah. the path of which way it's going to go and then i will craft it around what you're looking to do all right i'll all get right. i can get back to you on that on that tomorrow yeah yeah I'm I'm gonna be away a little bit tomorrow, but uh, I'll be around tomorrow morning for certain, yeah. and then um, mm -hmm. and then Sunday I'm gonna be home for most of the day Sunday as well. Right. Okay, all right. So well, thanks a lot. It was great gaming again, and um, it's gonna be on uh, YouTube that you're posting this. Yeah, I'll post it on my YouTube channel, you know, and then I'll put uh, it on the I'll put it on the Facebook page too. You know, so that so, I can link it. Yeah, so you'll be able to link it and everything. Okay, because I have a I have a friend. He plays D and D, and I had told him that I had started playing Mifrog, and I was uh, I told him that you were going to record a session, and he was interested in seeing what a Mifrog game looked like. Okay, so cool. If I yeah. can uh, repost the uh, the YouTube video to him for him to watch. Yeah, I think that'd be uh, he interest, that'd be perfect. He'd get to see how a Mifrog game plays. Yeah, that's cool. All right, all right, all right. So you have a good night. You too. All right. All right. Let's let's Signing. close this off. Signing off. All right, everyone. So, um, I actually have to change this uh, this here. So, I hope you enjoyed that uh, episode and the final conclusion of the final conclusion of Fair Winds and Bloody Shores. And uh, I will post this as we said at the closeout. Uh, I'll post this up uh, this evening, and I hope you enjoyed this adventure. And uh, future adventures coming up, uh, you know, we'll add some more uh, Mifrog adventures in and uh, and then some of the other games that I'm playing. Probably the next one will be Conan uh, 2D20. So you all have a good night and happy gaming.